I was doing some prototyping the other day in the Vue single file component playground, and I made this fun little drag and drop application. You can see here if I drag these around, we're going to swap places, and we're going to get this nice little transition between the cards. This got me interested in how Vue handles animations under the hood, and it turns out it uses a technique called flip, and that's what we're going to be taking a look at in this video. Before we do, I'd like to share something else with you though. I posted this on Twitter to get some feedback, and to see how other people might implement the same thing. I got quite a lot of replies, most people implemented it using something like Sortable.js or a different library, but if we scroll down far enough we're going to see another custom implementation. If we just scroll down a little bit more, you can see Bjorn Lu has implemented this using Svelte, so we're going to take a look at that implementation as well and see how they differ to the view implementation. First let's take a look at the view implementation. The first thing to notice is we're using transition group, and this is how Vue is going to apply animations. I pass in a name of cells, and this corresponds to cells move down here. And whenever they move, it's going to apply this transition of transform in over 300 milliseconds. So we get that nice smooth transition. Other than that, we're going to render all of our elements inside of here. We're just going to render an array of cards, and we have a number of event listeners. If we jump down here, we can see the duration of the drag is going to be 300 milliseconds. We have our card array, and I have this in transition key value map. What this is going to do is keep track of which cards are currently in transition. Before I start transitioning a card, I want to make sure it's finished its previous transition to get that nice smooth animation. We also keep track of the current card that has been dragged. And when we start dragging, we're just going to assign that variable. Finally, we have the drag enter, and that's going to trigger whenever a card enters another card. The first thing we do is see if the current card is dragging, so we don't want to swap places with ourselves, or we also see if the card we dragged over is in transition. If it is, we're just going to return early. Other than that, we're going to go ahead and assign it to that key value map, so we know the card is currently transitioning, and after the duration of the drag, we're going to delete it, to indicate that it's no longer in transition. Finally, we grab the source, which is the current location of the card, and the destination card, and then we just go ahead and swap them over, and everything is going to work as you would expect. Let's take a look at this felt implementation now, and see how that one works. It is remarkably similar, you can see everything works exactly the same, and if we jump up here we can see uh, in Svelte, you write the script tag first and then you write the HTML. You can see it's a very similar structure, we do exactly the same thing by creating a number of variables up here, and we have this swap with card function. It works more or less the same, you can see he used a set instead of a key value map, I think this is much cleaner and I much prefer this implementation. Other than that it is basically the same. If we scroll down here we'll see there's no transition component, to do animation in Svelte, you pass in an animate flip uh, par parameter to your div, and that's going to handle the animation. This is using exactly the same technique as Vue, which is called flip, and that's what we're going to take a look at right now. I created this small little application just to show you how flip works exactly. You can see if I click on this, it's going to transition over, and it's going to transition back. And this is using raw JavaScript, there is no libraries here whatsoever. Just to give you an idea of how this works, I'm going to show you the code and this diagram, and then we're going to dive into view and Svelte source code to see how they work. So over here on the left we have our kind of life cycle. You can imagine everything happens in frames. The browser takes time to update and repaint the screen. So currently we're on frame 1. The first thing we're going to do is get the first position, and the reason we're doing this is because of what Flip is implemented as. Just to show you how this one works, I probably should have shown you this a little bit earlier, but Flip stands for First, Last, Invert, Play. What this means is we're going to first get the current position, so that's where we're starting, the last position, which is where the uh, element finishes the transitioning, then we do invert, and this is where we calculate what has to happen to get from position A to position B. For example, we're going to scale or we're going to change the position. The final step is play, which is where we do the animation using something like CSS or a JavaScript library. Keeping this in mind, if we head back to our diagram, you can see we do first the, get the first position, which is by calling get bounding client rect, and we're going to get the current location. We're then going to add some class to update the position. We haven't actually repainted the browser at this point, we've just added a class, which is going to give us a new get bounding client rect when we call this function. Keep in mind we're still in frame one. Finally, we're going to play or animate the element, and then when the browser repaints, it's going to start changing the position. Just to show you exactly how this source code works, I'm going to open it up right now. The first thing I do is get my element, which is going to be that box element. We get our current location, which is the F for flip, the first location, by calling element.getboundingClientRect. 
We then go ahead and toggle these classes, and that's going to trigger our animation by making it go to the left or the right. Finally, we get the final position by saying elm.get bounding client rect, and this is going to be different to what it was up here. The reason this is different is we've applied these classes, and it's going to be over here on the right now. Note we still haven't actually triggered an anim animation. We then go ahead and do the invert, so we get the deltas and the different position. And then I'm going to call request animation frame, and it's going to console log this only when the browser starts repainting. Finally, I console log animate, and then we go ahead and call element.animate. This is a web API that's going to handle our animation for us. We then pass in the translation and the scale, as well as some other information like the origin, the transform, and the duration. Let's go ahead and take note of what order these callbacks are executing. If I click on flip, we're going to say animating, then we're calling request animation frame. So you can see what's happening here. This is not going to be called until after this function has executed, which means our animation has started playing. And that's how Flip is implemented generally. It is fairly simple. Now that we've seen how Flip works uh, with basic raw JavaScript, I will put a link to this diagram and the code in the description if you'd like to go over it yourself. I'm going to show you how it works in Svelte and view under the hood. First, let's take a look at Svelte. Just to refresh your memory, you have to pass in animate flip and then you pass in the duration here. And if we take a look at the Svelte code base, I'm inside of runtime animate index. We should note this is the only file in animate. It's very, very simple and small. And if we scroll down here, we can see here is the flip function. It's basically doing exactly what I was doing earlier in my code. We get the current location, the scale, and the dx and dy, so the new positions. We then go ahead and create the delay, duration, and easing. And that's pretty much all we need to do. You can see these elements down here basically map up to the source code that I wrote earlier. We have duration and easing, exactly the same as these ones down here. And that's how Svelte implements uh, Flip. Finally, with that in mind, let's head over to view and see how that implements it. Just note this line down here, CSS. We have a transform and the translate. If we head over to the view code base, I'm inside of components transition group. And if we scroll down a little bit to, I think it's around line 137 or so, Let's see if we can try and find it. Here it is, apply it translation. It's doing exactly the same thing. We get the old position and the new position, the DX and the DY, and then we go ahead and apply the translation. We can see over here in Svelte, they're doing both the transform and the translate. This function over here is only handling the translation. So the transition between the scale is probably somewhere else, but this is the same general idea. You can see the implementation here. It's very, very similar to the implementation we have over here inside of Svelte. So the ideas are applicable across both frameworks. You can see how simple this is, and this is the reason React doesn't ship its own Flip implementation, is because it's very easy to write your own. But I sure do appreciate that Vue and Svelte both include their own Flip implementation. It just makes everything a whole lot more easier and saves you the complexity of choosing your favorite library. Anyway, that's mainly what I wanted to talk about. We covered Flip and how it works. We saw a vanilla implementation. We then saw the difference between Vue and Svelte. Vue opts to use transition group, which is a kind of wrapper component, as opposed to Svelte, which decides to just inline the animation. I'll go ahead and put a link to all of these in the description, just so you can play around and see how they all work. Uh, it is really nice to kind of dive into these frameworks and see how things work under the hood. Anyway, I think that's enough for now, so I'll see you in the next video.